Hello and welcome back to a foreigner and family in the Philippines. And this is one of the spots we like to keep the carabao because she gets to take her little dip, her bath. This is the mommy carabao with her baby. Looks like he is interested in getting wet too, but he's a little a little standoffish. And mommy might be giving me the stink eye right now. She is a little, a little protective. Friendly without the baby, but with baby, she's a little, a little protective. He's hanging out, exploring. Look at the baby, they have a horn in my love. Ah, look at that. And it's not just horns for the boys, no horns for the girls. Uh, he is a baby boy, but he has horns. But you see mommy over there, she's got a big old set of horns there. And this is a great little spot down here uh, in the creek. Um, it is kind of slow moving, which is good, kind of helps keep some moisture in. There's a little choke point right there with a culver uh, where I maybe could clean that up if I wanted to clear this out a little faster, but it, it is nice to have the little uh, choke point here. And it's got the, the bamboo which runs along over here. Well, I'm zoomed in. Uh, got the bamboo here. There's Cielo making a rare appearance over here. It's like a ninja or a Taliban fighter, but <laughs> with the umbrella hat, which is still, I'm surprised the umbrella hat is still, still around, uh. but it's still going strong. Uh. And it get, it, yeah, it, she uses it all the time, especially with all the rain here. So, uh, I think mommy's relaxing with me a little bit here. And he's kind of checking me out a little bit. Um, I was hoping he was going to get in the water just to see. Have you been touching the baby? I have not touched the baby yet, but when I when I rolled up on him a minute ago um, in the back, it seemed like mommy was uh, preparing for preparing for war. Uh, I see. So so good. And get him his vitamins and his thing to help keep the ticks off to help with his skin a little bit. I think he's a little more sensitive and I, I do see, I just saw underneath his uh, neck there a little redness. So I'm going to make sure he's getting taken care of. This is a cool, cool area back here. So because of the bamboo and then you have the bananas on this side. It's actually running on each side of the creek there. You see some uh, bagged up there. I know that one's not a, it's not a, my, uh, I guess uh, a good example bunch. That's not going to be on the cover of my Forbes magazine for banana production. Uh, <laughs> not that that's ever going to happen. Uh, but hopefully the, it gets to be a sizable enough production to uh, keep us going, pay our expenses, and feed the family. Wow, she's actually making quite a wake here. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And this is the long creek that extends really far down. And and this and I, before I, I just when I was making videos just maybe uh, two months ago, I was talking about the dry creek bed. And you're thinking, oh, it's some old where there used to be a creek or something. But no, in the rainy season, I mean, it gets yeah, it's an actual little bit here in some areas. It's real. It's a, it's a lot thicker, a lot more water than this. And there's a little culver there, but it extends all the way around uh, that road that I had walked up to with the mango steam to the water. And all the way, it goes all the way back to that uh, area with some rubber trees and some thalcata trees. With some bamboo patches along the way. And, yep, yeah, did the mangosteen on that side, the durian on that side. Uh, the durian are adapting a lot, a lot better. Uh, probably the avocados are adapting the best. They got, and they got planted last. Uh, the durian are, are, are looking really good. But mangosteen, lanzonis, not so much. And in between, uh, the guibanos are adjusting and the uh, rambutan are, are doing okay. And of course, the, the banana are growing everywhere except for the bunchy tops. I haven't had that uh, fungus show up, which is great. Don't want it to. I could, uh, because even if you, you take and do a, uh, a burn hole on that, apparently that fungus is uh, very resilient. So you got to take measures, put some mechanical barriers in with those border trees, the fences, uh, take measures to make sure we keep that uh, fungus out, especially in a, a place where folks travel. They travel their, their carabao and um, or they're walking with their cow and where their cows and their carabao are oftentimes their plow uh, moving through from place to place and, and uh, maybe uh, acting as a carrier or a transmitter for that that fungus or some other kind of disease. But now that I'm here and I'm thinking about it, uh, with the banana, with those bunchy tops that we had removed, uh, the, the, the big, the big tr carrier for that bunchy top virus that moves through when the aphids, they get their mouth parts on it. I made a video about that. Uh, and they, it gets their mouth parts uh, infected with that virus and then they go eat another plant and they can they can potentially get that other infected that other plant infected so not only controlling the uh, bungee top bananas that appear it's good to control the aphids as well which in hindsight planting creek bananas might not have been the best idea it might have been better to have these uh, fruit trees one closer to the creek but they, they did need some a little additional spacing in it that that space was available so but it, it'll be a matter of just keeping up on top of not letting the weeds get so thick um, and, and, and keeping them clear, which will help out. And I, I actually increased my spacing. Um, some of the, what is it, those high density planting will do two meter by two meter spacing. Um, some other places will do two meter by three meter spacing. And I, I actually went with three meter by three meter spacing, which I hope uh, allows a little more sunlight in and helps out with uh, reduce pests as well. So I can reduce uh, those disease incidents, maybe keep those aphids out. Oh, but my neighbor was actually doing an experiment with um, the, over there in the corn, the army worm that invaded. And what he did was, it's just baking soda and uh, soap. He took the, uh, like a, a mild detergent. In the US, I probably would just use the, the unfragrant, unscented Blue Dawn is probably what I would use. And no, um, they, they don't sponsor me. <laughs> and I don't think they'll be contacting me anytime soon. But that's what I would use. And a little baking soda. And he did, he ran some experiments with it. And it actually, I don't know, something in the, the baking, the uh, little caterpillar, call it an army worm, um, ate, the, ate the leaves of the, some corn that he had put in there that had been lightly sprayed with, the, with it. And then it expanded and it's got killed them. And they had, they had plenty of food, but in those, it killed them. And then a control group, the um, army worm was still moving around fine. So it looks like uh, that baking soda would be a much more cost-effective solution and not only a cost-effective solution, but a more environmentally friendly solution rather than using uh, the Furidan powder and then coming through with the Padan spray and then even a more toxic one with more active ingredients, the uh, Vertaco, which we, we ended up having to use on our corn because the padan 
was ineffective and it's because of all this rain it might have just gotten washed away but fortunately now we don't have any army worm but it, it would have been nice to just been able to mix up a little um, baking soda with the uh, the water and the uh, a little a little dawn in there and then and, and had that be just as effective so that's something I need to I need to look at because uh, I want my fruit my fruit farm to be organic and that's kind of why I'm not spraying any of like the even the weed spray on this and trying to avoid uh, uh, pesticides here well I have to avoid it if I'm gonna be organic so but as far as on the corn over there, uh, I really don't have a have a choice. I can't lose my corn. Uh, there's a there's a big investment on that. So I, I would like to see how that does. But not only that, uh, that solution is also apparently effective against aphids, and that uh, that's where I'm getting at with it because I have all the bananas instead of having to for me to control the aphid population is to be able to do that uh, with the baking soda and not have. And I guess the the um, soap is added as a it helps to uh, helps it adhere to the the leaves so it doesn't wash off and gives the like the the pest a chance to eat it but and so I, with my bananas if yeah the aphids are running wild and I've got that uh, bunchy top virus showing up and I've got to keep I've, I'm going to keep removing those but if I've got to do something to control that aphid population that is a environmentally friendly solution for that and when I do it I'll, I'll post what concentration I end up uh, using on it. Uh, the concentration that my neighbor had used, um, he, he did a couple different ones, but the one that I particularly remembered was the uh, three tablespoons of water per liter. Uh, excuse me, three tablespoons of baking soda per liter of water, which I don't know, I'd like to, I'd like to know that it was a little bit less on that because you're talking of a tank with 16, uh, each tank of spray tank, backpack spray tank, is 16 liters so you don't want to have I don't know, that's a lot of well maybe just use a bigger scoop or maybe you can but now that you know it's an effective treatment see where the where it's most effective at the at the least amount of baking soda so I'd look at that looks like mommy had her dip still giving me the stink eye hasn't warmed up to me that's all right hopefully baby gets a little milk here I'll I'll leave them be that's all for now Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.